what is going on guys and girls welcome to the channel today is a very special video as this is a very requested topic that we are going to make a video on today the topic that we are going to make a video on today is how to overcome imposter syndrome as a aspiring scrum master or as a scrum master who's working currently in the role now before we address the topic First of all, I want to give a huge shout out to my friend, Valentine. Valentine has been on this channel before he did an interview video. If you haven't watched it, go ahead and watch it right now. It was the uh, second video from the last. Valentine is a very special friend of mine, and he's the one who actually recommended me this video and who told me that a lot of people are suffering from this problem. And also I've been getting a lot of comments and a lot of emails from people who suffer from this problem, and they're asking me how to overcome this situation. So I'm going to also answer all those emails, all those WhatsApp messages in this video right here, how to overcome imposter syndrome as an aspiring Scrum Master and as a new Scrum Master. First of all, let's answer the question, what is imposter syndrome? Imposter syndrome is something when you feel that you are not good enough to be somewhere or to be someone that you are currently, whatever you are doing. For example, if I'm making this video, there will be a feeling in my gut that I'm not good enough to make this video. That's imposter syndrome. If I'm working as a scrum master, there will be a feeling in my gut. Maybe I'm not good enough to become a scrum master. Maybe I don't deserve this. Maybe I don't deserve to be here. That's imposter syndrome. And it happens to the best of us. It happens to the best of us. And if you are someone who's aspiring Aspiring to be a Scrum Master, it's very, very common to have this problem as a aspiring Scrum Master to have imposter syndrome. But don't you worry. In this video, I will give you five steps that you can do to overcome imposter syndrome and never suffer from this problem again. These five steps, if you implement as an aspiring Scrum Master, if you are interviewing for a job, if you are preparing for a job, or if you are someone who is working as a Scrum Master, you do these five things and you will never have to worry about this feeling in your gut ever again. And you'll be able to work strongly as a Scrum Master and do a great job, whether you're interviewing or whether you're working as a Scrum Master. Nobody on YouTube or this whole goddamn world is making videos like this. So if you are finding value in my content, click on the like and subscribe button below. With that said, let's get started. First of all, as I said, what is imposter syndrome? Imposter syndrome is the feeling in your gut that you get when you feel that you are not good enough. If you are working as a scrum master, there might be a feeling in your gut that you are not a good enough scrum master or that people are seeing what you are doing or that you know you are scared. There's that fear. There's that feeling in your gut that you are not good enough. Or if you are someone who's interviewing for a scrum master, there's a feeling in your gut that you are not good enough or you are lying or you're some, something you just doesn't, it is not right in your gut and you are scared. You hold back because of that feeling. We will tackle that feeling today in this video, okay? That is imposter syndrome. Now, how do you overcome that feeling? If you are an aspiring Scrum Master, you don't have experience, you're just starting out in your journey. How do you overcome that feeling? And me, I'm the best person to speak on this topic because when I started, when I started my first job as a Scrum Master, I didn't even know how to conduct a standup. I was going to the backlog on Jira and I was going through the backlog from the past previous five or six sprints and I was running through them and doing the standup because I thought that was a Scrum board. That's how stupid I was. And, you know, if I can be here and I can, uh, you know, after all these years, I can do this, you know, then you can definitely do this because I'm not a very smart person at all, but I am able, I was able to do it and stick with it and, you know, be confident and follow these steps to win and to be where I am at today. So listen carefully, take notes and make sure you ask questions in the comments or through email or through WhatsApp, whatever. A huge shout out to everyone who's supporting, who's showing the love. I appreciate each and every one of you. Special shout out to my friend Valentine. With that said, let's get started. So the first thing, first thing you need to do if you are facing this feeling is be clear with expectations. Be clear with expectations. What do I mean by be clear with expectations? First of all, you have to understand that a scrum master is a leadership role. You are going to be put in a leadership position in front of the team and you have to lead the team, manage the team, you are in a leadership position. Be clear with that expectation. Be clear, mentally prepared that you are a leader of a tech team. Okay, no matter what you hear, we don't use these terms, we use servant leadership, we do all these terms, you servant leadership, they have taken out now. now. Be clear with the expectation that you are in a management, in a leadership, quasi-management and a quasi-leadership position 
as a scrum master and your job is to make the team better make the process better make the people and the process improvement in their team so have this expectation clear in your head so that the bar is high in your head and you are already mentally prepared for the challenge of leading the team and being courageous because being a scrum master is a quasi management role and you are expected to perform as a leader so have that expectation clear in your head that you have are a leader and you will be looked upon as a leader and being a leader is not the easiest job in the world okay so be clear with that have that clear expectation that you are getting into a leadership role and you are expected to perform as a leader leader of the tech team number one thing be clear to that interview when you step into that role you're better prepared now that's, that's the first thing the second thing is that the most important thing okay the most important thing not just is a scrum master but in your life in general maybe maybe you are not a public person so you might not understand what i'm going to say but i'm going to reference it back to scrum master go listen carefully be okay with hate be okay with hate and haters hate is a very strong word but i use this word for a reason as a scrum master if you are a good scrum master or if you are someone who is trying to become a scrum master some people will not like it whether it's the person interviewing you whether it can be someone in your technical team whether it can be someone who hates making changes to the team and when you are a scrum master you are improving the process there will be resistance those people will not like you and you have to be okay with hate you have to be okay with hating and hating people you cannot focus on that you have to focus on being good and doing good and you have to be okay with facing hatred mentally be prepared with facing people that will not like you people that will from where you will face resistance in the interviews in the process of applying for jobs when you are becoming a scrum master in the tech team hate is a very strong word but i use it for a reason be ready to face hatred for example me personally i'm a very public person i'm out in the public all the time i'm out on youtube channel i'm out on linkedin i'm out to meeting events you know i'm out to a lot of places all the time i know a lot of people i meet a lot of people as a public person it is i have learned over the years and as a leader uh, for my teams for my company as a leader i have learned over the years that hate is a part of being who i am no matter how many people i have helped through this channel in general in life no matter how much good i do in this world there will always be people that hate me there will always be people that do not like what i do and it's a good sign being having haters if you have team in, if you have haters in your team if you have haters in your family if you have haters anywhere that means you are doing something good and that means you are better than them a person who is above you a person who is big better than you a person who is richer than you a person who is more successful than you will never hate you they will never hate you because they will never have time to look down on you a person who is below you who has nothing going in his life who has not you know her life who has nothing going for him or her who is, has a miserable sad life who is who, who wants to get to your level who hates where you are the highest level you are at and they want to pull you down to their level because they know they are not capable of getting to your level those are haters and there will be people always like that in and around you no matter what you do no matter where you are and especially if you are in a leadership position you will face this emotion very strongly from evil people bad people example i face this I'm, i'm very used to this emotion and that's why even after facing so much hate you know i am okay with you know being where i am at in the in the world and in the, in the in the in the industry where i am at right because i am okay with it it's part of the it's part of me being who i am i'm just okay with it because i know there are evil people in this world let me give an example there is a lady uh, you know she was uh, she watches my video and some so for some reason she hates me i don't know why she hates me i, I don't understand she goes around you know uh, shitting on these other people's channel last night i have a friend who makes youtube videos who has a youtube channel uh, similar to mine and he sent me a picture and one of my sisters who is part of my mentorship group she sent me a picture that hey this lady is uh, saying these these things about your classes and you know and i knew because i have already been collecting pictures and i've been getting pictures from other people where she has been collecting and where she has been talking and i'm passing it on to my lawyers and you know 
we have more than enough material to sue her for defamation, sue her for stalking, which is a felony in the state of Virginia. We have more than enough material to go after her, but I still don't. You know why? Because number one, she's a hater. She hates me because I'm above her. I'm more than her and she can never be at that level. So she tries to pull me down to her level by hating, by spreading hate about me, by spreading bad things about me. But people can see through that. The people that are smart, the people that are you know, good people, they see through those things. The other thing that I don't stop this from happening is because it's free publicity for me. Because the people that she's talking to, they are coming back to me because they see the, how much value this channel has given them. They see how much value my mentorship has given them and they respect me. They love me as a brother, as a friend. And that's why they come back to me and they tell me all these things. So not only am I able to build stronger relations with the people that are giving me this information, it's free publicity for me. She's helping me more than she's hurting me. It's free publicity for me because so many people are able to hear my name. And when they hear my name, they come to my channel. And when they come to my channel, they see my videos and they see me for who I am because I'm a real raw person. There is no, there is no bullshit. There is no screening. There is no nothing. I am the way I am and I'm right here in front of you. Do whatever the fuck you want to do. That's what people see when they watch this channel. They see the raw, real energy and the raw, real value that this channel gives to someone. And that's what, so she's doing more good to me than harm. That's why having haters is good. If you have haters, that means you are doing something right. You are helping a lot of people. You are doing good in this world. And as a part of that, evil people, bad people that have, that have a sad, miserable life, they will hate you because they can never get to your level. So, as a leader, as a scrum master, be okay with accepting that emotion because you are in a leadership role. You will face resistance. You will face hate. You will face politics. You will face bad things against you. You have to be okay with it because it's part of being a role, being a leader. And always remember, never wrestle with the pig in the mud. You will win 100%. You will destroy the pig, but you will get dirty. And the pig will love getting dirty, but you will not because that's where the pig plays. So never wrestle with a pig, okay? Always stay in your lane. Keep doing good. Never focus on hate. If you keep doing good, you will win in the long term always. Now, that's the second thing. The third thing is own your weaknesses. Now, what do I mean by owning your weaknesses? As a new person, as a new Scrum Master, as a person who's aspiring to become a Scrum Master, who's doing interviews as a Scrum Master, who's aspiring to get a job as a Scrum Master, who's already working as a Scrum Master, as a new person, you will have a lot of weaknesses, a lot of blind spots, a lot of things that you don't know. And when you don't know those things, instead of covering them up, instead of putting them under the blanket, instead of running away from them, own your weaknesses in front of people. That will do two things for you. Number one, People will see the vulnerable you, the real you. They will be able to build a bond with you, your technical team, your management. They will be able to build that bond with you, that you are real. You don't know something, you just say. And that, that vulnerability will open you up to more, uh, you know, more help from them, more appreciation for them, more respect from them. That's number one. Number two thing which will help you by being more vulnerable is that, you know, good people, people that support you, people that are, have good intentions towards you, they will come out and they will help you galore. I'm telling you. Let me give you an example. I always wanted uh, you, I always watched these, these dictatorship movies, you know, uh, these dictators, some, some, you know, some of these dictators are terrible people. They do terrible things to their people, you know, they kill a lot of people. But most of the times, there will always be a group of people in their country that will always support them. No matter what they do, no matter how terrible they are, there will be always a group of people that will support them. Even they know in their heart this person is terrible, but they will just indiscriminately, they will love that dictator, they love that person, no matter what it is. And I never understood that. But once I came into a position where I'm kind of in a leadership position with my companies, with my roles, I understand that. Because people, they don't love them. They respect them. They respect their courage. They respect their leadership role. They respect their vulnerabilities. They respect their strength to stand up on a stage and grant this crowd. They respect, they respect the bravery of that person. They don't respect the person himself. They respect and love the bravery in that person because that is one thing that is rare in any century, in any world, in any country. So be open with your weaknesses. 
there will be people out of the five people, two people will be such that will support you, that will come in support of you behind everyone's back, that will support you and that will admire you and that will love you and that will show you the ropes, that will show you the right things to do no matter what. That happens always, mark my words. If you are in a leadership position, be vulnerable, show your weakness to people. Don't show it to an extent where you, where you completely get naked, but show it to an extent where the right people will come out and support you. And that will happen. Mark my words. If you are open with your weaknesses, open with your vulnerabilities in front of your team, in front of the people uh, that, that you are in, in the leadership role for, people will come out and support you no matter what, no matter if the whole team is going against you, there will be that one or two people that will always support you no matter what. And that is always the case. So third thing, own your weaknesses. Always, this is a very important point. Own your weaknesses if you are if you are interviewing. For example, if you are interviewing for a Scrum Master role and they ask you, you know, hey, what about this? Uh, and you don't know the answer. Sir, ma'am, being honest, I really don't know this answer. But, uh, you know, I can try to do my best and explain to you what I would do in this situation. Own up, own up your weakness, be honest. Honesty will melt the other person down. Honesty will open you, open your vulnerability up in front of the other person. The person will not know what to do, but they will love and respect you for your honesty. So own up your weaknesses as much as you can. Now, the fourth point over here is always be learning. Always be learning. Now, what do I mean about always be learning? As a Scrum Master, in this industry, this is an ever-changing industry. Things are always changing. Things are always improving. Things are always, you know, uh, getting better. Things are always moving ahead. If you are not learning, if you are a not person who doesn't like to learn, you will be left behind the trend. You will be left behind because the world will pass you by. Things will change. Things will improve and you will not know what happened. Always be learning. If you are stepping into this industry, if you are stepping into this scrum world, if you are stepping into this, into this career path, be okay with always learning. Now, even though I'm, you know, I, every day night, I go to bed. I read, I'm reading a book right now. It's called uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I have read it almost 27 times, but I'm still reading it again because it's, I'm, every time I read it, I find something new that I can implement in my life with people because I'm, it's, I'm in a people-based business. So always be learning new things, watch YouTube videos from, uh, from us on Scrum, go to scrum.org, read up articles, go to atlation.com, read up articles on Jira. They have really good articles there. Always be learning, always be improving yourself, always be learning new things. That day you didn't learn a new thing, that day is a waste, okay? Always be learning. If you are stepping into this industry, be okay with accepting the fact that this industry, you have to learn every day and you have to continuously be learning. That's what being a Scrum Master is all about. So always be learning, okay? Very important point. Fifth last important point, be super confident. Super confident, not overconfident, super confident. What do I mean by it, okay? So let's say I'm a new Scrum Master. I don't know anything. You put me into a role or I'm aspiring Scrum Master. I'm interviewing for a position. I don't know anything but to say. You put me in front of the interviewers. What do I do now? The interviewers will ask me a question. I don't know the answers. What do I do now? Okay. Or I'm in front of a tech team. The, the people will ask me, hey, what should we do? People will look up to me running the ceremonies. I don't know how to run the ceremonies. What do I do now? We as humans, we are ingrained it's in our blood and our DNA to follow people that are confident, to follow people that are decisive, to follow people that are strong in one direction, to follow people that are strong, decisive, and confident. This is ingrained in us. Now, if you don't know anything and you're standing in front of the tech team, you're completely a new scrum master, you cannot win over the tech team. They will see through your weaknesses. When you're running the scrum ceremony, you don't know anything. You know what can prevent you? You cover your weaknesses up with your confidence. You are so much confident. You are so powerful. You're so energetic that the team, even though you have weaknesses in your game, they see you 
and you are so confident, they are mesmerized by your confidence. Your confidence covers all your weaknesses. That's called being super confident. And they will follow you. Even though you might be wrong, they will follow your lead because of the confidence with the energy that you speak with, that you talk with. People will follow you because you are a confident person. We are ingrained. It is in our blood and our DNA to follow people that are strong, decisive, and confident. So if you are a confident person, you will never have problems in this industry because no matter what you do, you are confident, you are decisive, and people will love to follow confident and decisive people, <clears throat> even though you might be wrong or you might be making a mistake, okay? Look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself this question. Will you follow yourself into war? If we are going to war and you are the leader, will you follow yourself into war? You might not know what you are doing, you might not know the terrain, you might not know the enemy's strength, but you now you are put into a war. You have to be confident, or not only you, but everyone else around you dies. What will you do in that situation? So being confident and bringing that confidence from inside you, even though you don't know anything, it might sound very stupid, it might seem very stupid, but it's a very powerful tool. Fake it till you make it. It's a very powerful tool because it blankets all the weaknesses. It blinds people from all your mistakes. It blinds people to see the things that you are doing wrong and puts their, puts their focus on something else, your confidence, your charisma, your courage. It puts their focus on something else, distracts them from the problems and puts their focus on you and your personality. And that's what you can take and you can lead with that and people will follow you. Being confident, super confident is very, very important if you're a new person. Think of it like this. When I was new and I told you the situation, you know, I didn't even know what the backlog was. I didn't even know where the scrum board was. I, was. I didn't even know what sprint we were in. I didn't even know what epics were. I didn't know anything. I learned everything on the job. And I was lucky because uh, I met the right people. Brian, one of my agile coaches, you know, my first, uh, first person who held my hand, who helped, helped me, who mentored me, who showed me the way. I was so lucky because number one reason, not only I wasn't lucky because God made me lucky. No, I was lucky because I made my own luck. I was confident. I, I didn't give up. I didn't give up. Even though I didn't know anything, I was so confident. I was so courageous. I was so courageous in owning up my weaknesses. I was so courageous in speaking out with strength, with confidence that people just naturally came out and supported me. Fortune favors the brave. You must have heard that, heard that saying. If you are brave, if you are courageous and you take a step and you are decisive and you're confident, people will come out and they will support you. It's just how the world works. Don't ask me. It's just how the world works. So even if you don't know certain things in the beginning, it is very important to be confident in your role. Very, very important, guys. Always remember that, okay? Think of it like this. We are going into war. We landed on the harbor, we're coming through ships, we're going into enemy territory. We don't know how many soldiers they are. We are 500,000, 100 people. We are 300 people, 200 people. When we land on the harbor, our ships are gone. Now we have two options. Either we show our back like cowards, run into the water and go back, swim back, probably get eaten by sharks and die. Or we face the enemy, we fight with fury, we fight like we put fear in the heart of God himself. We fight like that. We defeat everyone. We kill everyone and we win. Or we die an honorable death. We put our forefather's last name to good use. We die an honorable death with pride and honor. Think of it like this. You have, you have landed on the harbor. You have landed the job as a scrum master. You have two options. You show your back. You run like a coward. Jump in the water. You are dead anyways. Or you jump in and you give it all you got. You fight with courage, with honor, with respect. You fight with all you got. 99% of the time, you will win. That's my guarantee. 99% of the time, you will win if you give it all you got. As a new person, as a person who is interviewing for the role, if you are about to sit in an interview, forget about the harbor, forget about the ships. March ahead. March ahead with all you got. And march so strongly that you put fear in the heart of God. That's how you have to be as a scrum master, as a new person. That's how hard it can be for a new person to get into the role. But with such fury, with such courage, with such a mindset, 
you will be undefeatable. You will be undefeatable. And I'm telling you because I did this myself when I was starting out. If you are a person who is a smooth talker, who is a hoity-toity person, who is not like, like a street person, like a raw person like me, like a real person like me, some people, they are educated and they are really put together, oh, I'm a hoity-toity, I'm a nice person. In that situation, then, you know, focus on building relationships. If you can build relationships, you know, maybe those relationships will help you out. But confidence is a must no matter what. Okay, so be confident always. Build relationships. It's a people-based business and people respect confidence and courage and decisiveness. Always remember that. So if you are put in a situation where you're uncomfortable, you're feeling that imposter syndrome, always remember the harbor is back there. The enemy is ahead. Fight with glory. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you find value in this type of content, click on like and subscribe. Also, don't forget to look for our mentorship channel, mentorship program. If you are looking for a Scrum Master job and this is you have never worked as a Scrum Master before, I'm the only person that can help you. I'm the best person that can help you. Click on the link down below, subscribe to our mentorship program, become a mentor, become our mentee and let me help you land your first Scrum Master job. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.